Adolf Hitler Adolf Hitler was born on 20 April 1889 in Brno Amin, a town in Austria-Hungary, present-day Austria, close to the border with the German Empire. He was the fourth of six children born to Alois Hitler and his third wife, Clara Pauzel. Three of Hitler's siblings, Gustav, Ida, and Otto, died in infancy. Also living in the household were Alois's children from his second marriage. Alois Jr., born 1882, and Angela, born 1883. When Hitler was three, the family moved to Passau, Germany. There he acquired the distinctive Lower Bavarian dialect, rather than Austrian German, which marked his speech throughout his life. The family returned to Austria and settled in Leonding in 1894, and in June 1895 Alois retired to Hafeld, near Lambach, where he farmed and kept bees. Hitler attended Volksschule, a school, a state-funded primary school in nearby Fischland. In 1907, Hitler left Linz to live and study fine art in Vienna, financed by orphans' benefits and support from his mother. He applied for admission to the Academy of Fine Arts Vienna, but was rejected twice. The director suggested Hitler should apply to the School of Architecture, but he lacked the necessary academic credentials because he had not finished secondary school. On 21 December 1907, his mother died of breast cancer at the age of 47. Hitler was 18 at the time. In 1909, Hitler ran out of money and was forced to live a bohemian life in homeless shelters and a men's dormant. He earned money as a casual laborer and by painting and selling watercolors of Vienna's sites. 41 days during his time in Vienna, he pursued a growing passion for architecture and music, attending 10 performances of Lohengrin, his favorite Wagner op. It was in Vienna that Hitler was first exposed to racist rhetoric. Populists such as Mayor Karl Luger exploited the climate of virulent anti-Semitism and occasionally espoused German nationalist notions for political effect. German nationalism had a particularly widespread following in the Meierhof district, where Hitler lived. Georg Ritter von Schonerer became a major influence on Hitler. He also developed an admiration for Martin Luther. Hitler read local newspapers that promoted prejudice and utilized Christian fears of being swamped by an influx of Eastern European Jews. He also read pamphlets that published the thoughts of philosophers and theoreticians, such as Houston Stuart Chamberlain, Charles Darwin, Friedrich Nietzsche, Gustav Le Bon, and Arthur Schopenhauer. The origin and development of Hitler's anti-Semitism remains a matter of debate. His friend August Kubizek claimed that Hitler was a confirmed anti-Semite before he left Linz. However, historian Brigitte Hamann describes Kubizek's claim as problematical, while Hitler states in Mien Camp that he first became an anti-Semite in Vienna. Reinhold Hannes, who helped him sell his paintings, disagrees. Hitler had dealings with Jews while living in Vienna. Historian Richard J. Evans states that historians now generally agree that his notorious, murderous anti-Semitism emerged well after Germany's defeat in World War I. As a product of the paranoid stab-in-the-back explanation for the catastrophe, Hitler received the final part of his father's estate in May 1913 and moved to Munich, Germany. When he was conscripted into the Austro-Hungarian army, he journeyed to Salzburg on 5 February 1914 for medical assessment. After he was deemed unfit for service, he returned to Munich. Hitler later claimed that he did not wish to serve the Habsburg Empire because of the mixture of races in its army and his belief that the collapse of Austria-Hungary was imminent. In August 1914, at the outbreak of World War I, Hitler was living in Munich and voluntarily enlisted in the Bavarian army. According to a 1924 report by the Bavarian authorities, allowing Hitler to serve was most likely an administrative error, because as an Austrian citizen, he should have been returned to Austria, posted to the Bavarian Reserve Infantry Regiment, 16 First Company of the List Regiment. He served as a dispatch runner on the Western Front in France and Belgium spending nearly half his time at the regimental headquarters in Fornes and Weps while behind the front lines. In 1914, he was present at the First Battle of Ypres and in that year was decorated for bravery, receiving the Iron Cross second class. During his service at headquarters, Hitler pursued his artwork, drawing cartoons and instructions for an army newspaper. During the Battle of the Somme in October 1916, 
He was wounded in the left thigh when a shell exploded in the dispatch runner's dugout. Keeler spent almost two months recovering in hospital at Bielitz, returning to his regiment on 5 March 1917. He was present at the Battle of Arras of 1917 and the Battle of Passchendaele. He received the Black Wound Badge on 18 May 1918 and in August 1918. On a recommendation by Lieutenant Hugo Gutmann, his Jewish superior, Hitler received the Iron Cross, first class, a decoration rarely awarded to one of Hitler's G. Freiter rank. On 15 October 1918, he was temporarily blinded in a mustard gas attack and was hospitalized in Pacewalk. While there, Hitler learned of Germany's defeat and by his own account. Upon receiving this news, suffered a second bout of blindness. Hitler described the war as the greatest of all experiences and was praised by his commanding officers for his bravery. His wartime experience reinforced his German patriotism and he was shocked by Germany's capitulation in November 1918. His displeasure with the collapse of the war effort began to shape his ideology. Like other German nationalists, he believed the Dolch Tasselgen de Stab in the back myth, which claimed that the German army, undefeated in the field, had been stabbed in the back on the home front by civilian leaders, Jews, Marxists, and those who signed the armistice that ended the fighting, later dubbed the November Criminal. The Treaty of Versailles stipulated that Germany had to relinquish several of its territories and demilitarize the Rhineland. The treaty imposed economic sanctions and levied heavy reparations on the country. Many Germans saw the treaty as an unjust humiliation. They especially objected to Article 231, which they interpreted as declaring Germany responsible for the war. The Versailles Treaty and the economic, social, and political conditions in Germany after the war were later exploited by Hitler for political gain.